Hey, how are you guys doing? You know, buying and hodling Bitcoin is sometimes, you know, for lots of fresh Bitcoin beginners or noobs, not an easy thing because there's lots of materials out there. Might be a little bit too advanced or too detailed or just not understandable, you know, not, let alone language. Because a lot of people, for example, in German speaking countries don't speak English. So I'm really looking forward to my uh, next special episode, the second part with Econa Alchemist. Check out his Twitter, follow him and his articles on EconaAlchemist.com or Bitcoin Magazine, which also been published. So the second part is going to be about blue wallets, very like, uh, you know, basic stuff for, you know, uh, setting up a Bitcoin uh, blue wallet, would it be on chain or lightning? So we're going to go all into all these uh, explanations. And yeah, when it comes to security, privacy, you know, uh, buying non KYC um, Bitcoin, uh, these are, you know, really important things. But, you know, I know I can imagine it's a lot of stuff at the beginning. So this is why we're doing it really basic stuff for fresh Bitcoin beginners. So without further ado, my second part with Econo Alchemist uh, Blue Wallet. Hope you're going to enjoy this. Spread, share, whatever you do. Thanks so much for your help. And give it a follow on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel and my podcast platforms. And here you go with Econo Alchemist on Blue Wallet. Welcome to the show, Econo Alchemist. Good morning. It is morning for me. It's bright and early here. Really, it's afternoon. It's super sunny, warm. It's finally getting warmer because I, you know, I was already getting depressed. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's Austria, you know. But uh, you know, depending on yeah. where you're located. So hey, uh, Conrad, thanks so much for coming on my show again and uh, doing this special ep tutorial episode. So this time, so last time uh, we did uh, Samurai Wallet in depth, and this time we're doing Blue Wallet. So. The stage is yours. Go ahead. Cool. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, this this tutorial is designed for total beginners. This is really just to help somebody get from zero to having their first mobile wallet, something that they can use to put Bitcoin on. Um, so this is going to cover how to install, how to secure, and how to use, how to send and receive Bitcoin. Um, you know, because too many people rely on third parties to hold their Bitcoin, and that's a problem. So this is all designed to try and help fix that. Um, just real quick introduction. I know I did this last time, but I just want to make sure it's clear on each uh, presentation. I'm not paid or endorsed by any of the company's products or services for any of the content that's mentioned here. Uh, I'm not an expert. Don't trust anything I say. Verify this stuff for yourself. Do your own research. Uh, when you have questions, reach out, ask somebody for help. Um, I link a bunch of um, Telegram groups for all of these, um, for Samurai Wallet, Blue Wallet, Sparrow Wallet, and Bisque Network. So these are really great resources to jump in on Telegram and get help, help from the community when you're struggling with problems. Uh, this guide's designed for absolute beginners. And only start with small amounts of Bitcoin until these concepts start making more sense. Don't put your entire life savings on your first Bitcoin wallet. Okay, so um, Blue Wallet, I'm going to cover, Blue Wallet can be downloaded on Android or iPhone, but I only cover the iPhone installation and use in this tutorial. Um, if you do have an Android device, I recommend using Samurai Wallet. And that was the previous um, presentation we went through. So for iPhone users, download Blue Wallet from the Apple App Store. And you can find more information on Blue Wallet's website. But Blue Wallet's going to download just like any other Apple app. So the picture I have on the screen here should look pretty familiar. If you've ever installed an app on your iPhone, you just click on install. And then once it's done downloading, then you click on open. And this is what you're going to be looking at. This is your home screen. And, you know, users should decide if, if they want to, you know, if they're a little more comfortable with the concepts of Bitcoin, then they can enable the advanced features which opens up 
some more options for users. Um, you don't have to enable advanced features. It's just kind of cool. And, you know, I'll, I'll briefly go over some of the stuff you can do with the advanced features. Um, I recommend doing it. It's, it's pretty simple, but you would just click on this three dot menu and it'll open up this page and then you click on general. And then you can toggle on advanced mode right there. And then you can use the back button to get back to the home screen. And that that's how you turn on advanced mode. Um, with advanced mode, you can do things like introduce your own randomness into the seed generation. Um, and and that's, that's just so you don't have to like fully trust the random number generator that's built into Blue Wallet. You know, for activate the dark mode, Ikana, uh, mate. Uh, how did you activate the, the dark mode? Because I couldn't figure it out. Uh. Uh, that's a good question. Um, let me see. Hang on, let me check on my phone. Damn, that's a really good question. I don't know how I got dark mode turned on. <laughs> Yeah, I thought maybe maybe a reinstallation would do it, but you know I don't want to go through this um, you know headache. So I, I was you know I, I I checked general setting whatever, and I couldn't I couldn't. But it's okay, you know we'll we'll figure it out maybe later on. Man, that's gonna bug me now. <laughs> that's all right. Man. <laughs> it's the feature, man. It just uh, you know because I I'm I'm like you probably you know I I I prefer dark mode. It's yeah, better for the eyes. Right. Um. Okay. Sorry, I don't know how to turn on dark mode, but somehow I figured it out. Um, I should have documented that. Um, so yeah, if you want to use advanced mode, go for it. If not, that's totally cool too. Um, and then, you know, once you're back at your home screen, then you can just click on add now under add a wallet. And you should be looking at this screen. You can choose a name so you can name your wallet. Uh, Blue wallet has lightning integration, uh, obviously Bitcoin, which is what we're going to be covering today. Um, and then it's got this vault feature. Um, I, I actually haven't used this vault feature, so I can't really speak to it or what it does. Um, but that's there and, you know, feel free to press buttons and see what things do. Um, if you did in it initialize the, uh, advanced mode, then when you click on Bitcoin, so what you're doing here is you're selecting the type of wallet that you want to create. If you click on Bitcoin, you're going to create a Bitcoin wallet. But with advanced options, you have a choice to do the Betch32 addresses, the nested SegWit addresses, or the, um, the legacy addresses. So I would just leave it as Betch32 because... These addresses will typically save you on transaction fees because they use a little bit less data than the other addresses. And once you've got that, then just click on create at the bottom. Or if you want to utilize the features advanced mode unlocks, you can click on provide entropy via dice roll right here. And when you click on that, you're going to be able to select like a coin. So you could do coin flips to introduce some randomness. You could select a six sided dice or an, uh, there's different um, configurations of dice that you can choose. And then, and then you can start like rolling your dice and putting in the numbers for each roll that you do. Uh, it's recommended if you do add your own entropy that you do a full 256 bits of randomness and it'll kind of give you a progress indication of how far along you are. Um, if you don't do all 256, then the run, the random number generator will just fill in the rest. And, and basically what you're doing is you're, you're just trying to create like a, a very random number that's going to be used to put through this algorithm that comes up with your really long, complex and unique private key. When this long, complex private key number is presented to people, it's usually done so in human readable format in the form of 12 or 24 words. So if you just use the standard 
ran random number generator built into blue wallet and do not add your own entropy blue wallet should kick you back 12 words if you do add your own entropy it should kick you back 24 words so that might be a consideration once uh in, in this case I, I move forward without adding randomness just for the sake of not confusing bitcoin beginners um but this is what you should be seeing once it generates your 12 words so it's taken this really long complex number and it's converted it into a format that humans can read which is these 12 seemingly random words but um they're actually based off of an industry standard format called um you can find it on GitHub. It just Google like the BIP 39 word list and you'll find 2047 different words. Um, I, I think I'll just leave it at that. People can do more research on that if they want. Um, so it's really important. So now we're going to talk about securing your wallet. So, you know, you've generated a wallet at this point and it's given you these 12 words. These 12 words are really important because if anybody gets access to these words, then they will be able to unlock your funds and steal your Bitcoin from you. So what you want to do with these 12 words is you want to write them down on a piece of paper in order, one through 12, and you want to secure this paper as if as though it were gold or jewelry. Don't leave it laying around, put it somewhere safe. Don't screenshot these words. Don't save these words in a computer on or on your phone. Never share these words with anyone for any reason. Your Bitcoin is only secure as these 12 words. Um, and then you're gonna confirm acknowledgement that you wrote those down by selecting okay after you've written them down. I also recommend not even saying these words out loud, especially if you have other devices in your home. You even, even around your own phone, you never know when that thing's listening. So, um, you know, take, take these 12 words pretty seriously. Um, uh, and, you know, a lot of people like to take their words and stamp them into a more durable medium than just paper. So like stamping them into metal washers or into steel plates. And then that way they can withstand fire and flood better than, you know, just regular paper could. What else did I want to say about these words? So yeah, take your 12 words seriously and um, write them down, secure them. Don't let anyone get access to them. And uh, I, guess, I guess I should also explain like, in, in the event that you lose your phone or you have to like reinstall this application or your phone gets stolen or whatever, if you ever need to recreate this wallet, you're going to do that with these 12 words. And so that's why you want to write it down, keep it secure. And then if you load a Bitcoin onto this wallet and then lose it the next day, it's not necessarily the end of the world. You can get a new device, install the application again, and then you can import a wallet and you can use these 12 words to import that wallet and it will recreate the wallet that you had originally and your funds will still be there for you. So um, that's what these 12 words are used for maybe a curio out of curiosity i mean the difference between a 12 and 24 word um uh seed is what can, i mean is it would it be easier or at all possible to brute force or hack or whatever like the 12 word um, seed um compared to 24 yeah that's a good question so it's right now no it's not possible to brute force like a 12 word seed phrase um do you remember that dude alistair milney i think so yeah mm -hmm. so he he did this like giveaway where i think he loaded one bitcoin into a wallet and then like every day he would he would put a clue out on social media 
as to what the word was. And he was doing all the words in order. And so each day he would, you know, give some clue and then people would try and figure out what the clue was. And they figured out like the first word, the second word, the third. Um, so I, I think they got all the way up to like eight words. And at that point, then somebody was able to brute force it. And um, the dude that did this, God, I, I'll have to send you the link on uh, Telegram. Maybe you can put it in the show notes. But basically, the dude that did this like set up a very elaborate system to be able to brute force just the last four words of the seed phrase, knowing the first eight words, um, you know, and it, it involved like, he was like renting uh, like a bunch of cloud servers to like process all the different combinations. And I think he did over like, a, I want to say he did over 1 trillion combinations before he finally cracked it. Um, and that's with just four words remaining. And I, I think it took him, I think he did it in less than 24 hours because he was trying to do it before the next word got released. Um, so, yeah, and that was, it, you know, for, for all like intents and purposes, it's, it's basically impossible to brute force 12 words. 24 words like forget about it i think the the difference is um 24 words i believe is 256 bits and um 12 words is like uh what a hundred and what's half of that Yeah, I'm not good at math, but, <laughs> uh, but you know, I guess that's, that's the reason, you know, they say mobile wallets or wallets like this is, you know, it's definitely uh, suited for small amounts. I mean, it's thought for, you know, designed for small amounts just in case, right? I mean, right. Yeah. Well, and you, you, you got to think for every single one of these words that's being presented on this screen, there's, there's 2,047 different possibilities for each one. So like the, the numbers just become staggering. So it, it, it's really secure. I would. Um, okay. Once you write down your seed words, then you should be looking at a screen like this. And this is basically where you're going to interface with your wallet from. And you can click on this blue icon to open up your wallet. If you've got any transactions or as you start accumulating transactions, they're going to start populating in a list here. And you're basically ready to start receiving Bitcoin at this point. So you've installed your wallet. You generated the words. And you secured those words. And now you're ready to receive some Bitcoin. And you can deposit Bitcoin onto this wallet and you don't have to trust that anyone else has control over your funds. You don't have to ask permission to use your funds. Nobody can stop you from broadcasting a transaction from your phone and spending your funds however you want to do it. Um, so at this point, you are well on your way to becoming a sovereign individual. You would just click on this blue icon and that'll open up the wallet itself. So then you'll be looking at this screen and then you can just click on receive right here. Um, I know a lot of people are probably going to ask, so I'll just mention it here. Like in my personal opinion, I do not recommend using the buy Bitcoin button. That's going to lead you down a path to KYC. Um, and I, I have very strong opinions about KYC and um, am an advocate for non-KYC. So if you want to buy Bitcoin, try and do it somewhere else. I would not recommend buying Bitcoin in the app. 
Yeah, and I think we mentioned that last time in our first episode. I mean, there's, you know, we're going to do a special episode, uh, I guess, maybe on that too. Uh, Non-KYC, uh, buying non-KYC Bitcoin on BIS network, uh, Bitcoin ATMs you know, up to a certain, you know, amount in Austria, it's like 250 euros or something. Or what I found out now uh, through Atsteco, you can buy vouchers, um, uh, uh, you know, Bitcoin vouchers and then redeem them either on chain or through lightning to Bitcoin. So just a short side note. Awesome. Yeah. The voucher system is pretty cool. Um, anything and everything you can do to go non KYC is going to be, you're going to be thanking yourself later for sure. But yeah, once you click on that receive button, Blue Wallet's going to ask you and just make sure double check that you wrote down your seed words and then it's going to ask you if you want to receive any notifications, like when you have an incoming payment. So that's your preference. Um, and once you do both of those steps, then you should be looking at your first QR code receiving address. You can physically display this QR code to a friend or whoever is going to be giving you Bitcoin and they can scan it with their wallet and then send you Bitcoin. Um, you can also just copy the address text and you can send that to somebody that way, um, you know, end to end encrypted chat, secure email, uh, however you want to transfer that. You, you should generally take precautions around linking your identity with Bitcoin addresses. So if you use like, gmail and it's your first and last name maybe not a good idea to copy and paste a bitcoin address there and email it to somebody like that you know just never know how this stuff's going to get linked and traced back to you in the future so just be precautious about that take take precautions is what i mean um also don't reuse addresses, like only use these addresses once. So, um, you know, you'll commonly see people post like donation links on their website and they'll just like copy and paste a static Bitcoin address. That's really bad practice. The Bitcoin ledger is public. Anyone can look that address up and see all the transactions going into it, all the transactions going out of it. And they can, it's pretty easy to follow on chain. So Try not to reuse any addresses. What about tipping me? Is that like, um, like how transparent is that? Or tipping me addresses? Or is that that because it's not like a, it doesn't change addresses? Like it's, it's is that a, like a static address? Tipping me? Do you know? That's a that's a good question. I I've actually never used tipping me, so I'm not totally sure how it works. Um, I've never even been on their website to be honest with you. Um, I would hope, you know, it, what is it? I, I don't even know what it is. Like you can send somebody Bitcoin with it. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of content creators or people on Twitter have, uh, you know, uh, tipping, a tipping address or tipping me, I think it's called. Huh. So I'm not sure. Would, that. Let's maybe research that later. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I would hope it's at least like connected to a BTC pay server and it can generate new addresses every time. But uh, honestly, I, I, I can't speak to that. I don't know. So yeah, once you've given this address to somebody, uh, they can use that to send you an amount of Bitcoin. And in this example, we're receiving 0 0.01 Bitcoin. And when you receive Bitcoin on your blue wallet, you'll see it show up as a pending transaction with three dots here. And this will remain in a pending state until the Bitcoin network has um, added so many blocks behind the block that your transaction was included in. And each one of those blocks is gonna give you another confirmation. And in general, if you're out there transacting with someone, let's say you sell somebody a car for Bitcoin, don't just hand them the keys and the title as soon as you see the pending transaction show up and then go your separate ways. You want to wait a little bit of time, wait for at least three confirmations. Um, I think industry standard is like six confirmations. That just gives you 
the like benefit of knowing that the transaction you just received cannot be undone. Whereas if the transaction is only pending, then there's a possibility that once you and your trading peer go your separate ways, there's a possibility that they could actually take the funds that were in the transaction for you and they could spend them to another address with a higher fee and that transaction will get included into the blockchain first before your pending transaction and, and then yours will never actually go through. So just wait until you have at least three confirmations if you're doing any sort of serious trade with somebody. Um, and, you know, that could take some time. That could be anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. So be prepared for that. Once you've got Bitcoin in your wallet, then you can also send it to somebody else. So right here, we're looking at the transactions in and out of this wallet. So you could see this was our initial transaction that was pending. And once it's got all its confirmations, it turns into a green deposit arrow. And then we sent some Bitcoin to somebody else and it turns into a red withdraw arrow. And then we received some Bitcoin back and it turns into a green deposit arrow. So all your transactions will show up here in your list and then your wallet name and your total balance will be displayed at the top. And so once you've got your, your Bitcoin there and it's confirmed, then all you need to do is click on send and you're gonna put in some additional details. So here, for example, you'll put in the address that you're gonna send the Bitcoin to. You can either copy and paste that if it was sent to you in text, or if you're physically near the person, you can click on this icon and it'll activate your camera. And then you can scan their QR code. And if you do that, you know, just, just try and verify that the address showing up on your screen is actually the address underneath their QR code and, and make sure that they're the same and that they match. Um, then you can put in the amount of Bitcoin that you want to spend, or if you want, you can spend the full balance, which is what I'm, what I'm doing in this example. Um, so you just go to that three dot menu and select full balance and then confirm with the notification. Yes, I want to spend the full balance. Um, and then, you know, just be aware that like when you do spend the full balance, it's usually a pretty good indicator on chain that someone is doing a self transfer. So just, just be aware. Once you've selected the amount that you want to spend and the address that you're going to send it to, then you can select how urgent this transaction is. And, this, and you do that by setting a, an appropriate miner's fee. So if, if this is really urgent and you need it in the blockchain, like in the next block, then set it fast. If it's not that important, set it for medium. And you know if, if you're okay waiting a day or two days, then set it for slow or if you're very cautious about how much money you're spending on fees, you can use custom and you can set your own fee rate. And, um, and like mempool.space is a great website to use to like monitor current transaction fees. Um, I really like using the custom option myself. Once you've selected your miners fee, uh, then you're just gonna review the transaction details. So you can look at how much you're gonna spend, double check the address you're gonna to spend to. You can see that it's what the fee is gonna cost. And then when you're ready, just click on send now and then your transaction is gonna be broadcast to the Bitcoin network. And so you can see here where that withdrawal went out and that's it, you, you sent Bitcoin. You didn't have to involve a bank. You didn't have to ask for permission. You didn't have to show identification. You could send it to whomever you wanted however much you wanted. Um, just to kind of summarize Blue Wallet, it's available on iPhone and Android. Um, it's easy to set up for beginners. It has more features for advanced users. 
has lightning integration. Um, and it can be connected to your own Bitcoin full node with Umbral. Uh, so I put their website there. And Blue Wallet has a community support channel on Telegram. So I put that link there too. That's great. So um, the Blue Wallet can only be connected to Umbra or also other nodes like my node or do, do you know that? That's a good question. And, and I had a little bit of trouble finding good documentation on um, connecting Blue Wallet to your own node. Um, I think it is possible. I think I remember there was some issues because other users had issues too with the, whatever that was, the, was it the Electrum server or the Onion address or whatever, something yeah. that wasn't working really properly, but I guess, you know, it's going to be improved uh, more and more. Um, let me see the other question I had is about the vault. You said the vault, um, yeah, it might be much too much now for the beginner, fresh beginner, but um, like, can you create like a multi-sig? Is that the purpose with the, with the vault or? It might be. And honestly, I've never used the vault feature on Blue Wallet. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not 100% clear on what that does. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do think that Blue Wallet does support multi-sig. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And I, I think that's what the vault is probably for. Mm -hmm. You know, in case of a $5 wrench attack, like, uh, can you create like, what is it called? Decoy, a plausible deniability wallet? Yeah, so... That's a, another cool feature in Blue Wallet. And, um, and I go over that a little bit in the article that, that's posted on my website. And yeah, the, I'm going to put those definitely up. These are beautiful you know, articles, really, I mean, detailed and easily understandable for every, any noob out there on Bitcoin Magazine, on your website, economyalchemist.com, right? <laughs> right. So, so yeah, there's a feature on there where you can like go in and you can select, um, you can add a password so that you have to unlock your wallet with the password and it encrypts the wallet file, the wallet data file on your phone. Um, and then once you've set a password for your wallet, then you can choose to create like a duress wallet where you can set another password, a different password, and it'll open up a completely different wallet if you enter that password. So if you get kidnapped and someone's holding a gun to your head and they say, open your wallet, send me your Bitcoin, you can type in your duress password and it'll open up what looks and feels exactly like your real wallet. But it's just a, a like decoy wallet that you've deposited a little bit of Bitcoin in to hopefully satisfy the demands of your attacker and get them to leave you alone and, mm -hmm. and leave you alive. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that? What's the feature or function or where, where do you have to go in settings? Or is that a, like an, uh, somewhere in on wallets or? Uh... Yeah, let me, uh, here, let me open it up on my phone right here. So from, from your home screen, uh, you go to the three dot menu at the top. Okay. so. Here, let me, let me start that over so you can edit that silence out. Um, from the home screen, go to the three dot menu at the top and then click on security. And then towards the bottom, you're gonna see storage, encrypt and password protected. So then you, you click on that and then you, you enter a password and then it asks you to like confirm your password. And then once you've done that, another option will, will show up underneath the option you just toggled on and it's called plausible deniability. And then you click on that and just follow the prompts and you can, you can set up an, another password, which you can use to create like a wallet that you know it, it functions just the same as like a regular blue wallet no one can tell the difference um but when you type in that password it it, it will not be able to access your other wallet right yeah beautiful yeah that's mm -hmm. so uh did we miss anything i mean do, do we need to cover anything do you we, i might not have asked or 
Anything important? Um, Any issues that might come up or which um, common issues uh, like in, like in the Telegram groups? <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's good to run your own node and to connect your, your Bitcoin wallet to your own node. That is an advanced topic, but I just think it's important for people getting started to understand that if you're not running your own node, then you're trusting someone else's node. So um, just be aware of that and be thinking about that as you start learning more about Bitcoin. And that should be a goal for everyone involved with Bitcoin to run their own node. Um, Blue Wallet, you know, it's got a ton of features that I didn't cover here, um, but it, it's it's got a really good user interface, user experience, and they've got a lot of really great features in there. So it, it's just a very solid wallet that I think people can um, get familiar with. Uh, and not get like turned off of the whole Bitcoin experience because they started with some wallet that did not have good UI UX. Yeah, and does the does Blue Wallet like uh, you know uh, like if you compare it to Phoenix Wallet, like can you switch uh, between on chain and Lightning when you're doing transaction? Is is that something like you can just switch back and forth with Blue Wallet? Yeah, you can set up uh, a Lightning wallet. And it's pretty easy to get Bitcoin into it. But then, um, and then, so basically you just transfer Bitcoin from your Bitcoin wallet in the app to your Lightning wallet, also in the app. And then, and then you can spend anywhere Lightning invoices are accepted. Uh, and then if you want to get like Bitcoin, you can also like create lightning invoices and send those to people and they can pay them. And then you'll see the like lightning payment show up in your wallet. Um, so that's all great. And then if you want to get the funds from the lightning wallet back into Bitcoin, then you have to use this like third party service. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's all linked it's all like right there in the app. So it's it's pretty easy to do. You would pay a small fee to transfer it from your Lightning wallet back to Bitcoin through that third party. Um, but it's all pretty straightforward. All right. So I, you know, I can only, again, strongly recommend to read your articles because it's, you know, with all the graphics and super explanations on, on your website, econoalchemist.com or Bitcoin Magazine and follow you on Twitter. Uh, which I'm going to put all those in the show notes. So any final thoughts or um, any uh, thing that still we might have missed, I think, or is that it? Yeah. You know, I think, I think this one's just pretty short and sweet because uh, blue wallet can be used in such a, a simple configuration. And, and that's why I really like it for onboarding people, especially if they have an iPhone um, you can, you can download the app and secure your seed phrase and be ready to transact with Bitcoin in less than 30 minutes. It's, it's just pretty fantastic for getting people started. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an advocate for non-KYC. Mm -hmm. I'm an ad advocate for coin joins. So, you know, we'll, we'll get more into that later, but Anyone who's listening to this who hasn't listened to the first part, you know, we, we talk about the dangers of KYC and the importance of self-custody a little bit there. Um, I also wrote a long form article on the topic on my blog. Um, so I, I would definitely consider just investing a little bit of time in understanding why KYC is dangerous and why you should really be cautious about exposing your personal information as it relates to bitcoin right. and yeah you know just start with small amounts of bitcoin until this stuff starts making more sense mm -hmm. and you know as you build your knowledge base then you can also be more confident in using these tools and and use them in a way that's going to be secure super great so i'm really looking forward to the third part um what's going to third part going to be <laughs> uh sparrow wallet on desktop the spare what? Yeah, it's a beautiful. I already tested. It's a beautiful user experience, user interface. It's really awesome and amazing. The feedback is from other users also just great. 
And I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, also Spectre is going to catch up a little bit with the, you know, with the smooth uh, user experience of Sparrow. But I already tested it. And for my girlfriend, she's also happy with it on her laptop. So, yeah, just wanted to awesome. say that. Cool. That's good to hear. Yeah. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. Uh, Mate, thanks so much. And um, if you have any uh, do you have any other resources or links or uh, which I'm going to put in the show notes anyway? Yeah, just, you know, check out my website. Check me out on Twitter. I'm an open book, not an expert, but I will answer any questions I can and try and point people in the right direction. Yeah, you already, I mean, for me, in my eyes, I mean, you're really super experienced, very advanced user. So it's really great that you, you're able, you know, to break things down uh, educationally. So thanks so much again for all your efforts and work, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. So I'll see you soon. Okay. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Bye. All right. Thanks. Okay. How was that? That was amazing. Um, so, you know, really non KYC Bitcoin as far as you can. Uh, I know it's beginnings a little bit difficult, but get your, KY your non KYC Bitcoin, whatever, via Bitcoin ATMs up to certain, you know, amounts there. You know, you don't need to identify yourself. This network is really easy to use. We're going to do a special episode on that. Or, you know, you can uh, buy at stake of vouchers. Uh, in England, I know in the UK, you can you know buy it in shops, but our, but now you can already buy it uh, via PayPal or something like that, like without real KYC, and then redeem them for uh, for Bitcoin uh, via Lightning or on chain. So yeah, get your own node, uh, get into the Telegram groups, follow me, follow Econo Alchemist on Twitter. There's a bunch of materials out there, podcasts, articles, books. Just, you know, educate yourself as far as you can. And I know, you know, time is very costly. It's, you know, the day is only 24 hours. I'm especially, uh, you know, people like me who have also children, I can alchemist. It's, uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, you know, effort you have to put into that. But, um, but you, you know, you can handle it. Everybody can handle it. And there's a lot, you know, so many people like Khan alchemist who are willing to help, who are willing to educate, who are willing to support you and yeah. Make sure you follow me and subscribe to my YouTube channel, podcast platform. If you love any of any of my episodes, make sure you you leave me a five star review on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, what have you. So, yeah, take care, take care of your security, your privacy, and stack sets every day, every hour, and always. Thanks so much again, and I'll see you soon. Bye.